Well, good evening, Chicago, surrounding areas, United States, the world. My name is Pastor John Hannon, and I'm excited about being here at Salem Baptist Church. I want to thank God for Pastor Meeks, an humble man of God who has decided to share his stage with so many people. And we honor him on tonight that he is even sensitive enough to know to zone in on what we need to deal with when we talk about faith in crisis. So I'm excited about being here tonight, and I am going to go for, come later and talk about who will share with us on tonight. But what I want to happen, I want everyone to share this on your page. If you are watching this on Facebook, if you're watching it on YouTube, wherever you're watching it, we want you to share this on tonight. We want to get the word out that we are going to deal with our faith in this crisis. I'm excited. Look at me. I'm so glad to be outside. I'm so excited. I feel like a little kid on a field trip. Lord, can I thank you? They did. My wife let me come outside. I got to go right back home, though. But I'm grateful that we have some of our praise team with us, and we're thankful for them. So before we do anything, let's pray. So God, we honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you. You are God. You are great. You are mighty. We ask God that you would have your way on tonight and that you be glorified. We ask God that we have clarity. We ask God that you give us direction. We ask God that you make us understand where we really are right now. This is a season that we are in. So we ask God that you would just begin to pull the veil back and begin to reveal why we're here and what we are supposed to do while we are here. So get the glory out of tonight that everyone that's supposed to be in here, get in here to hear this and to see this. Receive our worship. Let it be pleasing in your sight. Just be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wherever we are, we lift our voices to the Lord. Yeah. We call on the name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue must confess. He is our Lord, yes, He is. So we worship you, Lord, and we give you glory. Hallelujah. Come on, let's say, call the name of Jesus. He is our healer. Call the name of Jesus. He is our light. Yes, he is. Call the name of Jesus. He's my protector. Call the name of Jesus. Somebody call him deliverer. Let's cry out to him. Say, Whoa. We cry out.
Miracles, yes, you are. Still You're still the God of signs, wonders, and miracles. I still, I still believe you're able to do exceedingly still and abundantly above all I ask, above all I think. I still believe. I still believe. It works. 
that name Your name still works. Your name is a strong tower. You're a righteous God. And we believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you that are on social media, can I just get you to just type that name? Type that name in, Jesus. That name that is above every name. Um, and tonight is entitled, basically, Faith in crisis and we would be fools to believe that this is norm this is not a norm can you do me a favor can you celebrate our praise team we're going to thank god for them being with us on tonight they're going to come back at the end amen and let them go rest their feet amen they have on high heels tonight god bless them they'll be back later all right, so I really want us to have some real honest conversation on tonight, and I believe that is a 911 in the spirit. Um, I don't believe that we are here by chance or by accident, but I am crazy enough to believe that our steps are ordered by God. I don't even believe that those of you all that are watching right now, that you are watching by accident. I believe that it is God's will that you be tuned in on tonight. Um, if anything I want to say tonight is, be thou made whole. Be thou made whole. In other words, when Jesus healed ten lepers, the Bible says, he says to them, now go and show yourself, continue your lives. Go and show yourselves to the high priest. And the Bible says, as they went, things changed. They were healed. But then one looked at himself and said, you know what? There's something else missing. So he turns around and he runs back to Jesus and he falls at his feet and he begins to worship. He says, were there not 10? Where are the other nine? Did the other nine get comfortable with what, where things were or did they desire better? And the Bible says he looked at him and said, but you be thou made whole. It is my prayer that tonight that God begin to make people whole because this thing has um, shaken our world. It has shaken our lives. We are all out of our comfort zone. And I would not st sit here and play deep with you and act as if when this thing happened, I just came out, you know, giving God glory. No, I was balled up in my bed asking God, what is this? What is this? That we, our whole world is being rocked. And I felt as if um, things had been shattered. And I literally, if I were to be honest with you, it took me a week or so to get me together. Like, I'm, like what is this? My whole world was rocked. And what did the Lord begin to say? And that's what we're going to say to you tonight. But Pastor Meeks called me. I went in prayer and I was like, okay, God, what do we need to address? And he says to me, my people are losing it mentally. They're literally losing it mentally. And hear me clearly. If the devil gets your mind, he got your body. Because so a man thinketh, so is he. Everyone that is listening to this tonight, um, and if you can admit mentally, this thing is kind of shaking you a little bit. Um, let's talk to you first. And we are grateful to have um, Look, Love McPherson with us on tonight. She's going to deal with the, the, the mental piece. And then my brother, whom I so celebrate, I honor him on tonight. We have Dr. Ian Smith with us on tonight. He's going to deal with the physical piece. Because there's a physical part of us that if we don't handle this right, it will begin to break you down physically. 
Once he gets your mind, then he begins to work on your body. And then when he work, work on your body, how does he work on your body? He can keep you up all night, won't let you sleep, won't let you recharge, won't let you get your mind together, won't let you get your thoughts together. And then physically you begin to break down. And then once he gets your mind, then he gets your body, then he comes for your spirit. And then he begins to crush your spirit. But tonight, you're going to be like Samson. There's one line, and his hair began to grow again. Come on here. You about to, you, you about to get your fro back. Hmm? Your edges are about to return. Won't he, Will? He's an edge giver. Don't tell me you won't give your edges. I am excited tonight. Um, love the person to have you. You are a counselor. Yes, a certified family and um, marriage counselor. And I have... Let me tell you why I love her, because I've sent some people to you. Yes. When they came to see me, I said, no, you don't need to see me. You need to go see love. <laughs> I want you to honestly tell us uh, what is going on in the mental realm right now. Because, saints, and we wrap it and hide it behind Jesus. But mental illness is real. It's a real thing, Pastor Hannah. You know, the thing about it is this virus is not just coming for pre-existing physical Come conditions. On. It's coming for pre-existing mental health conditions. And what we have is a lot of untreated trauma in our communities that we have mm. never dealt with. So we are actually some of the people that, they are, that this pandemic is preying on. And what we are finding is that the trauma are being re-triggered during this, this uh, season. And so people are experiencing, see, because everything is more quiet, we, quiet we're experiencing more silence, but guess what? House. The yeah. memories are getting louder. And that's what's, okay, what's wait, taking us out. Wait, you got to say that one more time. <laughs> the, the room is getting quieter, but the memories are getting louder. And some of these are unresolved issues. Unresolved traumas. So what have you been seeing lately that has been coming to you mentally. Um, they did a report, domestic violence has increased. Absolutely. Um, domestic violence, this is what's happening. You're finding that because of untriggered traumas and things like that and people are facing themselves, the, the worst part is they have been so focused on interpersonal relationships until they have not focused on intra personal relationships. They have not dealt with themselves. And if you can't deal with yourself, you can't uh, deal with somebody else. So they have been so busy and distracted and not getting to know what has happened to them after that last divorce or after that last betrayal or after that failed business. They have never come back to find out what happened to them really when dad walked out and during that divorce and they watched their mother get beat down. Never dealt with it, just went into to life. And now they are silenced to look at that date rape, to look at that molestation. And I'm telling you, it can be very traumatic because trauma distorts how we see ourselves, trauma distorts how we see others and how we see our future and God. And so what they're seeing is they're looking at themselves in a whole new way and it's unfiltered. They can't hide behind social media. I need you to tap on that screen, I'm seeing me. Yes. I have been forced to look in the mirror. Some of y'all did not realize how angry you are. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Some of y'all don't realize how you stay busy so that you didn't have to see you. You know what they're having? They're having this Wizard of Oz unveiling moment where oh. you, you, you was this big person, had this big persona on social media, and then you're back home by yourself and the curtain is pulled and you're like, ah! Oh, that ain't no big old bad whiz. We thought that we thought Love McPherson was everything. Look at Love. She's just a regular person. She is a regular broken person. And we're seeing our brokenness. So and it's face to face in front of us. Give me three signs that I'm losing it mentally. Like I need to be able to say, this is what's going on, this is what's going on. Give me a, a three to five. Let's just a three okay. to five <laughs> signs that would say to me, no, you are losing it. Because the worst thing to do is to be losing it and be in denial. The first thing is the anxiety will begin to increase. What happens with the anxiety is that anxiety feeds on 
um, the memories and the worries. It, it feeds on distortions, exaggerations, and lies. And so if somebody has lied to you about um, your life or you have lied to yourself and then you're, you're, the, the trauma that has triggered says, this is what's going to happen to you. So if you're watching the news and you are full of anxiety and this is what you'll see with anxiety, anxiety arrests your whole entire body. So anxiety will take over your heart because your heart will start beating faster. It doesn't have to be real. See, trauma does not have to be real. It doesn't have to be existing. All you got to do is start, take yourself into imagination land. If you're living in imagination land where you are taking yourself to the point of watching yourself in under a, a, a respirator, watching your parents die, uh, feeling a, it, it will take your, your, your heart and it will start beating it fast. It will take your blood and start sending it other directions and tightening up your muscles. You'll have cloudiness in your head. All of these symptoms, which are COVID-19 symptoms, coronavirus symptoms. And so you will then become even more agitated, even more fearful, even more anxiety prone. And then after you exhaust all of this energy, guess what it can lead to? Depression, because depression is emotional exhaustion. So all of this emotions that depression you are exerting is, and is, worry. Hold on, slow down. <laughs> God, I got I to gotta take this in. Depression is? Emotional exhaustion. So I'm emotionally exhausted. Exhausted, exhausted. absolutely. And, and when I say pre-existing conditions, there are people, see, the country, the world, uh. is actually living out what people in high-risk neighborhoods live out every single day. They have to social distance. Why? Because they're suspicious of everybody who might rob them as they walk down the street. They are uh, sheltering in home because they don't know who's going to drive by. They are watching things. They are naturally suspicious of everybody as you walk past. They are uh, so, so people have been in these high states of alert, of anxiety, of depression because of emotional exhaustion of the day-to-day -day worries of life and 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 then the worst part is always when does it end somebody tells you oh it's gonna end tomorrow it's gonna vanish away in the community they say it's gonna end as soon as you get I your heard education that on CNN. Go ahead. it's it's gonna end as soon as you get your your your, your um your, your, your education it's gonna end if you if you go to church it's gonna end and then they watching People die anyway. So this and is so hard it's for a control freaks as well. I this is very difficult for a control freak. Oh, yeah, because control is fear. Control is Talk fear. Oh, love. <laughs> because, so you can't control. And this is the thing. So happiness Talk is the opposite. Love. This is what, what the, the problem is. Happiness, they think, comes from once it's over, I'll be happy. That's not, a, that's not true. You'll never, the, this is a global uh, collective trauma, which means that it shifts society. We will no longer know society as it is today. So there can be another letdown of depression after it's over because you cannot go back to what you used to be. But, but what happens is this. As they began to talk, uh, um, in, in, in when you were talking about the anxiety and the depression and things like that in our, in our uh, places, we have to know that this is a shift of, of, of us, shift of our society, shift in our homes, shift everywhere. And we have to not take ourselves and put ourselves in some idealistic period, anticipating some end to this. So one of the things we want you guys to do is that if you have any questions when it comes to the mind, if you want to be honest and ask her some questions when it comes to the mind, we want you to literally begin to type those questions in. They are going to read those questions. They're going to bring them to us, and then we can answer some of your questions, okay? So I want to talk about this because people are very short-tempered right now. Um, they're screaming at their children. Um, spouses are cursing each other out. Um, the verbal abuse is getting out of control. It takes emotional stamina to, to speak to you correctly, to greet people, to talk, to be kind. It takes emotional stamina. You have to be strong. It takes an effort. When you are exhausted, you don't have the effort. You don't have the ability to talk to people like you should because you're depressed. Depression says emotional, I'm exhausted, and that's why they like to retreat. They, they, they feel like I can't, I don't have the energy to interact with you. Or if I do interact with you, I don't have the energy to smile, watch my words, 
talk to you, so there's a lot of irritability associated with it. And, and, and so all of those things lead to depression. If you're in a worried state and you're in a heightened state, you're in a fight or flight state. That's what anxiety does. It puts you in a height, a, 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 a fight or flight. But so we you're ready down, for the so fight. So we can't go anywhere. Exactly. So now what do we have to do? People who used to just j run out the house, run to the side chick, or, uh, or run to the bar, or, or run wherever they was to church, right? The people who used to run are stuck. And guess uh. what? If they ever been incarcerated, they will feel the trauma fresh, even though. It is not that, that they are in an incarcerated setting, but trauma will tell them they are. Say that one more. T I got to slow you down. Say it again. <laughs> if they have ever been incarcerated and they have the trauma of incarceration, jail, prison, whatever, this can actually trigger the feelings of being confined. And in your house, you will feel like a prisoner and you will respond like a prisoner. You will act like a prisoner and your spouse may not even know what's going on. Wow. So if I realize that I'm losing it mentally, give me at least two things that I need to do to get me together. This because will be won or lost, uh, Pastor Hannah, right here in your mind. You have to discipline your mind. You have to discipline your thoughts. It, with, with, it, with, whether you're married, whether you are single, you have to discipline your mind. You have to ask yourself, the, the, you have to challenge your thoughts. Challenge your thoughts. Is this fact or is this feeling? Don't fight against feeling, okay? Because emotions. Emotions are actually, should be treated like physical pain. Physical pain is a gift to us in, in certain ways. Because if we stepped on a nail and we didn't feel it, we could bleed out, we could have, our, have to have our foot cut off or whatever. Emotions, you should feel this and then ask yourself, why am I feeling this? Why, why am I feeling sad? Why, why am I feeling anxious? Why am I feeling? So, so the first thing you do is you challenge your feelings. Okay, I and, got a question. Mm -hmm. um, can the mental instability affect your immune system? It, all, it does because of the different kind of chemicals. What happens is this, dopamine and adrenaline, serotonin, all of those things, th they find that depression, and I know Dr. Ian will touch on some of this, the, the, the depression actually is, uh, in our communities, is a, a lot of lifestyle choices that contribute. They put to, uh, up against each other. Uh, uh, walking three times a week in a brisk walk, 30 minutes, three times a week up against Zoloft and walking one each time. Shut up. Because shut there up. is a, a the, the, there are natural chemical releases that are depleted and absent uh, in, in depression and in anxiety, in the fight and flight. If you are constantly in adrenaline mode and all of those chemicals are excreted, your body was not created for, you know, back in the, maybe a minute, two minutes, but we're talking about months and days and, and for some communities, years. And so all of those chemicals being released in, in excess, the, the, the stress hormones, and then the other ones that are being depleted, like dopamine that keeps you happy and things like that, there are natural ways, but we use dopamine. social media, social media does dopamine too, but there are natural ways like exercise, Dope. the right food choices, thinking, gift thoughts, those right. are. I wanna get to Dr. Ian, guys, we're gonna come back to some of your questions about the mind. But as I said to you, if the enemy gets your mind, yes, he got you. then he gonna shut down your body. And I asked Dr. Ian to come because of anyone that I know that is concerned about the body is Dr. Ian. He writes books on their, um, t on the top bestseller list. I mean, he is consistent. If anyone that I can say that has been consistent, it has been you. You have found your vein, you have gotten your lane, and you are staying there. So when you begin to hear that um, the effects of this was affecting more African Americans and those that had pre-existing issues, and what I begin to say is some of our people are not together physically, so you don't have physically what it takes to fight this thing. Um, what, have you, what would you say to us in the physical realm that people are admitting, I'm not together physically? You know, it's interesting. So the first thing I think about is when we talk about uh, how it's affecting us physically is looking at what we've been doing historically physically. 
Come on. And unfortunately, African Americans lead a lot of categories when it comes to chronic disease, kidney disease, asthma, congestive heart failure, diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension. So, yeah. that, so that's a bigger issue, right? And most of my career has been about how do we, as African Americans, reduce our risk for these diseases because these diseases, unfortunately, make us live painful lives mm. and it eventually kills us. So when you look at COVID-19, you look at the numbers, they're saying, why are African Americans dying at such high rates? The first reason is because of these chronic illnesses. If your body is already suffering. That's in our bloodline. That's right. Your body's already suffering. Your body's already weak from fighting off these chronic diseases. Then you throw on top of it coronavirus, which we don't even know about, right? This brand new kind of enemy on top of the weakness that you already have, then it overwhelms the system. So it's not a surprise to those in the medical field that you're seeing African Americans dying at higher rates because we suffer from at a higher rate of these chronic conditions. So the second thing is our access to health care. You know, true. Historically, we don't have great access to quality health care. So what happens on the south side is different than what happens on the north side. And most of the deaths are on the south side. Okay. So, so we have to look at that and say, you know, what's happening on the south side? Are we getting the proper tests? Are people having access to physicians, to the right emergency rooms, and what have you? So that's extremely important. And then the last thing is this. Look at where we work, okay? Look at the jobs that we have. Now, we don't only have these jobs, of course, but a lot of us are working in public facing positions, driving buses, driving trains, store clerks, driving Uber. So we are at risk of seeing it's everything, everything. Thousands of people a day are in our sphere and therefore we are at risk of this. So it's not surprising to those of us in the medical field as to why we're seeing high percentage of African Americans, but this is what we need to do. We have to first acknowledge that we're vulnerable. That's the first thing you have Your to do. Your body is already weak from fighting these bloodline curses. That's right. You got to acknowledge that, first of all. You got to be honest with yourself and your oh. mind first, right? Once we have that honesty, then we say, what can we do now? Okay, now let's, I want to stop right there. Because right now I want everyone to really pay attention because I believe that while we're quote unquote on lockdown, if there are any changes that need to be made, they need to be made now. That's right. Because when that gate open and you go back to that cafeteria with your friends eating and you back sitting at restaurants and you back doing you, it, this is the perfect time to bring some things under subjection. So give me, um, I want to know, diet and physically some yes. things that I can do while I'm on lockdown. What you said, by the way, is wonderful because I've been saying to people that this is the time. In my new book, Mind Over Weight, I talk about being able to control your environment. We now have <laughs> the best time being to control able our... to control your environment. Here we are. This is a controlled environment. Now, you are at home, yeah. right, eating the food that you have to cook and buy. The first thing we need to do is eat more immune-boosting foods. Such as? Broccoli, spinach, almonds, yogurt, citrus, like oranges and grapefruit, garlic, turmeric. All these things boost your immune system, okay? And why that's important is because the immune system... No Harold's is, chicken. No Harold's right now. <laughs> we got to hold off on Harold right now. <laughs> no but, potato uh, chips with hot sauce and a cold pepsi? Nah, this ain't the time. Okay. This ain't the time. This is, this is a message from the universe saying right, to I'm, us, I'm, we, we got to get this together right what now. What do you snack on? Glory Al to God. Almonds. Almonds. Veggies. Hummus. Chickpeas. Lentils. Beans. Legumes. Mediterranean. This is the time where the... But yeah, this is the... Listen... <laughs> This and, is good. Yeah, and you got to add spices, by the way. You, Come on. Spices are the magic of food, right? You can take the blandest of foods, black beans and brown rice and chicken, and you add a different spice combination, and you got 50 different dishes. So that is extremely important. But people have to also understand this is an opportunity, Pastor, Come on. for people to say, I'm going to make a change right now. Because I believe God is saying, let's hit the reset button, right? This is his message to us that, Y'all, slow down for a second. Everybody's moving too fast. I don't care how rich you are, how famous you are, how poor you are. It doesn't matter. This is affecting all of us, right, all over the world. So it God's is. saying, hit the reset button. Okay, we hit the reset button. What does that mean? Let's talk about what we put inside of our bodies, right? Let's stop putting junk inside of our bodies so we can avoid those chronic conditions that are now making us weak with coronavirus. So here we physically, 
I'm in the house. Gyms are closed. Not that you were going that often. Let's just be honest. You were not visiting the gym that much. But now that the, you can't go work out, tell me something physically that I need to do while I'm on lockdown. First thing, steps. Either steps in your house, your apartment building, wherever. You go up and down a flight of steps, that's one set. Try to do that 10 times consecutively. No machines, no gym membership, you can do that. Number two, running in place and jog punches. Running in place and punch the air at the same time. Do it for 35 seconds, then rest for 30 seconds and go back and do it. You can do a workout in your house for 15 minutes and burn more calories than you would have walking an hour on a treadmill in a gym. But people have to understand you got to do it. Like you just can't theorize about it and dream about it. You got to get out and do it. On my Instagram page, at Dr. Ian Smith, spell the doctor out, you will see workouts. There's a three-minute workout on ice skaters. And people are like, oh, that's easy. Halfway through, people are on the ground. Because there are things we can do at home mm -hmm. with two feet of space that will give you a full body workout. So uh, using your stairs, by the way, jumping rope, air rope, old fashioned exercises. Air rope. Air rope. Let's say you ain't got a jump rope. Air rope. Double That's right. Dutch. That's double Dutch Come air on rope. Here. That's right. You just got to move it. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there are a lot of exercises we can do right at home uh, that will not. Um, require any kind of machines or equipment, and all we right. got to do it. So, guys, I, I want you to hear me. Um, I can back all of this up with scripture if you want me to, because I know some of y'all are deep. I'm, watch, I'm reading some of the comments. J prayer will wrap all this up. There are some people that are praying, but they are fat, overweight. They got diabetes, hypertension, and everything, but they will pray the paint off of a wall. <laughs> so prayer is not just it. Faith without works is dead. Say and that again. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Faith? Because we believe, but we don't have any works. We don't do anything. We don't um, practice thinking better, practice addressing our issues, addressing our past uh, works. We don't practice changing our diet, changing our diet. We don't practice just getting up, move your body for five minutes one day, 10 minutes the next day, 15 minutes the next day, 20 minutes. You on lockdown. This is the perfect, perfect time. time. Perfect. to make some changes. Perfect. Even if you walk around your community with your mask on, just walk. That's it, that's just, how you start. You start, people try to do too much too fast. That's it. And when they can't accomplish it, they get discouraged and depressed about it. I say, take one step. You know, habits take, you know, 14, 20 days to change, right? So if you could just start off by walking around the block one time, right, for a week, and then increase that two blocks and then increase the speed that you do it. You'll be surprised at how your body, even if you've been deconditioned for a long time, how adaptive and resilient your body is to change to get better. But people got to take that first step. You just can't talk about it. You got to go out and do it. I want to back this up with scripture because I know some of you all. So the Bible said that there were three Hebrew boys. They were taken captive. They were on lockdown. They were on lockdown. They were on lockdown. They, these three built a village amongst the three of them, accountability, accountability. Mm. Get someone that you can be accountable to. They decided that they would not eat the king's meat, nor drink his wine, change their diet, mm. change their diet, change their diet. And the Bible says when they brought them before the other people, they were healthier, they looked better, they were wiser, they were more skillful. Why? Because they changed. Mm. They didn't allow the lockdown mm. to get them mentally. Mm -hmm. They didn't allow the lockdown to get them physically. Mm -hmm. But they made some um, decisions among themselves. Mm. Accountability. Build your village even on lockdown. Mm. Mm. Build your village even on lockdown. Because if you don't, you're going to begin to feel as if you are out here by yourself. Mm. And the worst feeling is that you are alone. Can you speak to the singles right now that I, they don't have anybody to hold them, cuddle with them. They don't have, some of them don't have children. They are literally in the house alone. That's a whole nother thing mentally. Can you address that? It really is because loneliness has a study show that loneliness is the, uh, feels the same and has the same effect as cigarette smoke. 
And so, yes, it's just as deadly loneliness is. Jesus. And, and this is what I want to tell singles. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to come real with singles. Please First go. of all, what happens is this. You will say that if I were married, I would be happy because then I wouldn't be lonely. Then I would have somebody to cuddle every day. Then I would have somebody with me. There are many couples out there who are trying to get out of their marriage because they want the same thing. <laughs> they don't want to be lonely. They Come want on. somebody to cuddle, Come on and they want somebody to, to, to be with them, but they are married. They are trying to get out because they're not getting it in marriage. What I am telling you is this. You cannot decide that your happiness will come externally. 50% of your happiness comes from your genetics. That's that generational curses. That's that epigenetics, the, the traumas that, are, that go from generation to generation. Uh, only 10%. Only 10% of your happiness will come from external. The coronavirus is only 10%. 40% is Good. internal. It is what you can control. Your mind, your thoughts, the, the, your lifestyles, your, your decisions to get up and walk. Accountability is everything. I sat in a, a, a condo with a, a gym that was 19 floors below me and didn't go for about nine years. I got a hired a, a personal trainer and had accountability and changed my lifestyle. Do you understand? Okay. So you have to get up and get moving. Thank God I started doing this before Corona. And so what, but, but you have to make sure that you begin to make these choices for your mental health. You got to talk to yourself. And this is what I tell uh, singles, date yourself while you're at home. And, and what, do you, what how do you date yourself? First of all, sit down with yourself and talk to yourself. I know you're scared. Hold on now. We call that schizophrenic bipolar <laughs> behavior. <laughs> Don't answer yourself now. You can talk to yourself, but you better not answer. But you better listen. You better listen. Listen yeah. to yeah. what you are saying to you because this is what happens. The <laughs> wounded child in you, the wounded girl, and the wounded boy is talking to you all the time. And you are fighting the intellectual you, the spiritual you is fighting. But see, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what do you, what do you have when the wounded child is trying to guide you and the, the, the intellectual you is trying to guide you? You have inner conflict. Mm. And so what you do is you sit there and you don't know. And who wins? the person with the strongest voice the person who has the strongest hold over you for the longest period of time and usually that's the wounded child if you have never gone back to be healed intentionally and not just saying Jesus 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 I know people are being healed that way yeah. but I'm saying really dealing with your stuff because Jesus died for your stuff talk to yourself listen but listen with compassion give yourself boundless grace Boundless grace. Don't judge yourself. Don't, don't treat yourself like a lot of times you wouldn't even treat your friend. A lot of times we, you're so dumb, you're so stupid. You can't self-talk yourself into that because Satan is coming for your image. And if your image is that I'm lowlier and I'm weak and all these, these other things, then what's going to happen to you is you will crumble because mentally you can't handle it. So I say give yourself grace, show self-love, um, and nourish yourself properly with what you speak over yourself. But people have to respect themselves too. You have to, I believe that it all starts in the mind, honestly. I mean, I do too. My whole point is uh, with this book, and the reason I wrote I this book is because I don't care how good your diet plan is, I don't care how good your trainer is or exercise plan, if your mind if isn't right in the mentally. right place, you will not succeed. If you're There's not no right doubt about mentally. it. This is, the mind is mind. ground zero, right? Because you had to get your mind right before you decide to do it, right? I had to. You had all the all the trappings and all the availability and accessibility, but your mind wasn't right to do it. And you know the, the, what I had to find out as, as I began to travel, the pain of getting through these airports and rushing was more difficult than I, wa I wanted to e experience. And so my motivation for the pain that I was having had to be more, uh, it, it, it's all about motivation. What, what the, oh my goodness, so, so what she's saying, I, you preaching what I, what she's saying is, that we all have different motivators, all of us. There's external motivators and internal motivators. And when you are having difficulty tying your shoes, putting on a lap belt, getting to your gate because you're running late, you are now motivated because you have pain and anxiety but you're not gonna make it. That's gonna motivate you to go to that gym oh, yeah. below you. In Mind Over Way, I say the first chapter is unlock your motivation because all of us have motivation, but we don't know how to find the motivation. And then when we get the motivation, we don't know how to keep the motivation. That's right. And that's why it starts in the mind. And that's why you have to understand that you can do it 
once you tap into that motivation, and I source, wasn't dealing with any sickness, so I didn't have any pills that I take. I wasn't no I have hypertension, nothing in, in in my body. So I didn't wasn't motivated. I was like, I'm I'm good until I wasn't good. So you weren't good. All right. So for those of y'all that are struggling mentally, um, I want you to find Love McPherson. I want you to find her. Trust me. Um, for those of y'all that know physically, some things need to change. Dr. Ian has a new book out. Listen, um, I know that Dr. Dr. Ian, it works. He took our producer, Ahmed, and changed his entire life. He lost close to 100 pounds working with Dr. Ian. Yep. It works. Get the book, find out how to do it. For those of y'all that don't know, like, I just ordered a, a juicer. I figured, well, since I'm locked up in the house, let me learn how to juice. That's right. Oh, I'm about to be the baddest juicer you know. <laughs> I might start sale juicing. Do you juice every day? I'm, my, I, I'm tracking it on Amazon when it's going to be delivered. <laughs> so I've already warned my wife, you better get ready because we're about to juice up in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've dealt with the mind. We've dealt with the body. Saints of the living God, allow me for a few minutes to address you spiritually. I need you. We walk by faith and not by sight. Um, I need us to be careful with what we are allowing to come out of our mouths. Because mentally, if you're not right, physically, if you're not right, then verbally, you are about to speak something on yourself that you're not ready for. You got to hear me. The Bible lets us know that when the children of Israel were locked down in the wilderness and they began to say, we're going to die here. We're going to die here. And God had already done numerous things to let them know that he was God. For those of y'all that are listening to me right now, I need you to take a piece of paper out. I need you to write down three things that you know nobody did but God. I need you to literally bring these three. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope that it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Great is, come over here, you know the Bible, thy faithfulness. I need you to write down three things that, that God has already done, done for you. What am I doing? I'm having you to remember. The Bible says that when the disciples got on the boat and they went into a storm, the moment that they hit a storm, they began to panic. There's one line in scripture that says this. Please listen. They remembered not the loaves. In other words, God had just done a miracle for them, but they were so locked up in the present trauma that they couldn't remember what God had already done. Yeah. And I need you to hear me. God, please hear me loud and clear. God did not bring you this far to let you down. I know that you're going through a season and some of you all are laid off. I know that some of you all don't feel good. Some of you all don't like where you are. That is a present situation that you are in. And he knew that you could handle it. Can I tell you something? He literally proved himself before you got here. So that when you got in this space, you would know that he, that you are favored. Let's go there. That you are favored by God. So hear me. I watch the news. I listen to them. Why do I watch the news? I watch the news so I can know what I need to pray about. I watch the news so that I can know what I need to rebuke. I watch the news to make sure that I know the facts of what's going on so that I can be keen but I'm not going to believe everything that come out of their mouths. When they first came out, they told us that we should expect between 100 to 200,000 deaths. I said, the devil is a lie. We started a prayer group on Facebook, Mondays and, I'm sorry, on Tuesdays and Fridays, and we began to cancel those words. We began to say, 100 to 200,000 people will not die under our watch. We shall live and not die. We shall live and not die. We shall live and not die. We began to speak that, and then they came back and said, you know what? We are going to say that we didn't think about this correctly. No, you thought about it correctly, but God. Come on, you all. I need those of y'all that are typing on Facebook. I need, you to, I need you to literally begin to type on that screen, God got me. Ah, come on, say that. God got me. So why am I feeling this? Why am I feeling this? Please hear me. This thing is heavy. What do you mean it's heavy? Um, I weep almost every day 
because I feel the weight of this. I feel the grief. I feel sorry for people who can't have the proper funeral, can't have the proper burial. I weep because I feel the fear in the land. Um, the moment that somebody feels just a tingle in their throat, they're like, oh, God, calm down. Stop. He did not bring you this far to let you down. Let me give you this. Can I get the praise team to come on back out? Um, I want to give you this, and I want you to read this when you, get, when you get a chance. I want you to read Luke 5 and 17, 5 and, se- and 18. The Bible said that there was a man who was paralyzed. That's the weight. And the Bible says, but he had some men who carried him. For many of you all, you feel the weight of this. You feel the weight of your house. You feel the weight of your family. You feel the financial strain. You feel the weight of it. You literally feel the weight of it. Please listen to me. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. You are not going to break. You are not going to drop. You're strong enough to handle this. Come on. You are strong enough to handle this. Can I get you wherever you are to open your mouths and say, I am strong enough to handle this. I will not break. The Bible says that when they carried him, they got to the house, watch me, and it was full. So there was something in them that they had. What did they have? They had a press. They did not turn around. They climbed on top of the roof. That's the physical. That's the, that's the mental. A mind. I'm not going back. That's the mind. I'm not going back. That's the physical. I can carry. Physical, I can carry. Mind, I'm not going back. Mind, I'm not dying. Mind, I'm not going to give in right here. Mind, I'm going to come out of this. Mind, God's going to change this. Mind, things are going to change immediately, suddenly. Mind, they climbed to the top of the roof. Persistence. They broke a hole through the roof. They lowered the man right in front of Jesus. Hear me, we have to get to Jesus. We have to get to Jesus. They lowered him in front of a Jesus, and look what Jesus says. And the Lord says, and the Bible says, and when he saw their faith, and when he saw their faith, he spoke to the paralyzed man and said, get up. Why was he able to get up? Because physically, they were strong enough to carry him. Mentally, they were wise enough to keep pushing. And spiritually, they were spiritual enough and had enough faith enough to believe that God was able. Wherever you are right now, can you lift your hands and begin to worship the God that has already proven himself, that he is on your side. You're not dying. You're going to live. You're not dying. You're going to get yourself together mentally. You're going to get yourself together physically. You're not going to backslide during this season. I cancel the spirit of addiction, and I call you to stop drinking. I call you to stop smoking. You will not be like the dog that went back to his vomit. You will not get back involved in a relationship that was sent to destroy you. It's not going to happen. You're not going to lose your mind. You're not going to have a nervous breakdown. Mm -mm. You're not getting divorced. (laughs) You're not. You're not. Your kids are going to be fine. All things are going to work together for your good. And when you come out of this, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has in store for you. Listen to me. He made you a promise. Anything that God promised, he has to do it. If he doesn't do it, then that makes him a lie. And if he lies, that means that he's not holy. And he's not going to sacrifice his holiness lying to you. I just need you to stay strong. I just need you to do what? Keep your mind right. I just need you to do what? Keep believing. And you're going to see the hand of God. Let's worship God for what's what you've received on tonight. You know that this was God that had you here. I will let the praise team sing. We have like two and a half minutes. In the last minute, I'll pray you out. But I want you to know that you, 
are going to make it through this mentally, physically, and spiritually. Come on, say that. Mentally, physically, and spiritually, I'm going to make it through this. You made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way Now we're standing here Only because you made a way We give you glory, way maker Miracle work. Come on, worship him wherever you are. Worship him wherever you are. You made a way. You made a way. When our backs were, when our backs were against the wall, and you looked as if it was over. Somebody say you made a way, made a way. When our backs were, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was all you made a way. Yes, you made did. a way. Now we're standing here. Now we're standing only here. because. Wherever you are, lift your hands right now. So, God, we honor you, we magnify you, we glorify you because you are God and you are a faithful God. You were God before the virus ever showed up. You will be God while the virus is here and you will be God when the virus is gone. You are a very present help in the time of trouble. So, God, we come to you and we ask you, God, to begin to touch our minds. We ask God that you would give us the ability to think on those things that are just, those things that are pure, those things that are honest, those things that are lovely, those things that are of a good report. And we ask God that you begin to restore the mind. We now pray, God, we pray that you begin to build the body. Give us the ability to move our bodies. And as we move our bodies, let our faith be increased. And you will be glorified. Worship God right where you are in Jesus' name. Somebody say you made a Yes, you did, Lord. Made yeah. a way. When our backs were, when our backs were against the wall, and you looked as if it looked as if it, it was, was over, you yeah. made a way. Now we're standing here. Now we're standing here. Only, only because you made a way. We declare, we believe, and we say, we say. You move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power, perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible, now we're standing here only because you may say you move mountains, you cause walls, you cause walls. Say you made a you made a way. Yes, you did, God. We believe who you are. You yes, God. Made a way. We believe your way maker. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Made a way. We believe you're still a way maker. Made a Don't way. know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you 
but you don't know how, 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 but you